the Irish ambassador. I had a, a couple of maybe comments and then uh, a, a comment that might sort of change and, and transmogrify into a question. Uh, I was fascinated, and I think you said it was by an American uh, analyst that created this new arc of uh, in, instability, therefore, and weakening governments, etc., therefore, uh, also um, a certain element of risk along a certain arc. That's one thing. Uh, and that arc extended sort of from uh, Latin America through Africa into Asia. But interestingly enough, uh, and maybe this is just a constraints of time, in apart from a passing reference to um, Brazil in your comments on elements of change in terms of its growth as an economic power, there was actually no real mention of Latin America at all in any of the sort of strategic visions you were outlining, either of those of the United States or uh, Europe or even of the Asian powers like Russia and China. Um, and it is actually quite interesting, both in terms of, um, uh, particularly of China, uh, and also of Iran, the interest they are taking actually in yeah. the continent of Latin America. And when one thinks of this arc, another element you didn't mention, although you referred to climate change, and that is the possibility of conflicts be the small, uh, either regional or sub-regional conflicts over the issue of water. Mm -hmm. And that arc actually passes through many parts of the world in which water is an issue, including Latin America, certain parts of that are extremely arid, uh, Africa, um, all, and also maybe not so much, but in certain parts of Asia as well, even, even within China itself. Um, and so that, that also becomes an issue. But my question really is, has is there a big black hole in um, uh, defense and security policy thinking and analysis in, in, with respect to Latin America? And, and just as a, as a passing comment, I think the, uh, what makes um, your, your job probably more difficult nowadays but also more interesting is that given that there is now this multipolar world, it also leads to a lot of unpredictability in terms of where uh, conflict might break out next and over what issue. Um, and I think that uh, you quoted a couple of examples that make that very clear, that a couple of years ago, as you mentioned, the EU would not uh, have thought of being uh, in um, off the coast of Somalia, uh, uh, trying to combat the problem of piracy there and protection, obviously, of, of European uh, shipping interests. Uh, so that, that those really were the, the main the main comments. And the question really is where whether Latin America has been forgotten, uh, also in connection with the increase in military spending, for example. Yeah. Uh, okay. No, it's a very good question. I mean, it is true that traditionally Latin America has been very much seen as part of the US domain, going back to even the Monroe Doctrine. Uh, and if Europeans have thought about Latin America, and it has tended to be mainly in Spain and Portugal, but most of the thinking uh, has come at the EU level on Latin America, it's been very much focused on trade, which is understandable uh, in many respects. Now, I think the Brazilian stroke Turkish uh, negotiations with the Iranians surprised some Europeans because the EU thought it was the one leading the negotiations. Uh, and it's a clear example exactly of rising powers and more actors in the international security scene because uh, Turkey, of course, would also see itself as a rising power in many respects. Uh, so maybe there's two ways to answer the question. Uh, we have had, actually, at our own institute, a number of conferences with uh, groups from Latin America, and two issues tend to come up. They ask if we're willing to contribute and, e and even run operations in Latin America, and normally we're not. Uh, or, you know, although, obviously, in a situation like Haiti at the beginning of this year, we do want to try and contribute. Um, but in general, I think the, because the focus is so much on our neighborhood, for EU operations. We, not many people imagine the European Union having operations in Latin America, and they tend to assume that it will either be the United Nations or the United States that would cope with the situation in Latin America. But, given that Brazil in particular, 
which tends to get most of the attention because of its size. It's just so big now. And given that Brazil is reforming its armed forces, is actually spending a lot, the increases are quite large in the Brazilian defense budget, and also has quite an interesting defense industry. If you think about Brazilian transport planes, for example, they're cheaper, but they're very effective than a lot of European or American models. This will become more relevant in an era of austerity in Europe. So if Brazil, what we have often said to the Brazilians is, you know, we would like to cooperate more with you with the UN in trying to improve UN peacekeeping because the EU has to work with the UN on these issues, you have to work with the UN on these issues. So that's clearly one area for cooperation. But I suspect we may increasingly see cooperation and capabilities as well. Be beyond that, the big question is exactly political cooperation on key issues like Iran. But how that will develop, I don't know. I just don't know the answer.